Hey guys, what is up? Crates here, coming at you with my first tutorial, and it's going to be a tutorial on 3D text motion tracking. So, real quick, I'm going to show you what we will be doing in this tutorial. Let me play this quick three second video. So, very simple adding text into a real scene in um, a video game. So, this is Call of Duty Black Ops, and of course, you can use any game you want, but I just chose to use that video file. And let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. So go ahead, you're going to want to open your After Effects CS5 or CS4. And the three programs we're going to be using today is Cinema 4D, Buju, and After Effects. So if you go into After Effects, um, go ahead and go to File, Import, uh, File, and then you're going to find whatever movie file you want to use. I've already made a folder um, with my um, video in it, so it's labeled Track Video. And you're going to go ahead and click and drag into the auto composition button. And basically what it does, it just makes an auto. It makes a composition that fits your video settings already. And if you're like me and have a crappy HD PVR, you're going to get a black bar on your right side or on your top. It Probably for you it's going to be a lot um, less than mine. I don't know why, why mine is like this. But you, you guys probably don't even know that that's how my videos are every time I... Uh, upload them to YouTube, but I just switch fix it, and nobody can really tell. So if you go into uh, your, you select your video layer, click S for scale, and I'm gonna scale mine up to 104%. And now I'm gonna click and drag and adjust it to where you can't see the black bar. And if you have Hot Pug HD PVR, uh, you can usually just change it to 101, and it will get rid of the black bars automatically. So this is all we're going to be doing in After Effects. Uh, we go to Composition, Add to Render Queue. You're going to go to Output Module, click Lossless. Um, you're going to go to Format and make a TIFF sequence. And this is going to create a, a sequence of images, of, of TIFF files of the video at 30 frames per second because that is what frame rate I recorded at. And if you go into render settings, you're going to want to make it uh, 30 frames per second. So if it doesn't say use comp frame rate, if it's not 30, um, make it 30, unless it's lower. If it's 29.97, you're not going to want to increase the frame rate or it's not going to look good. So just leave it at, if it's less, leave it at that. If it's more, bring it down to 30. And then hit OK. And then output 2 is basically save as, and I'm going to name it. Uh, let me find the folder. I'm going to put it in the track tutorial folder. And let's name it uh, sequence G. And for some reason, my Buju, I don't know if, if your Buju is the same way, but when I load something that has too long of a file name, it won't open the file. So I always name it something very short. And so I'm just naming it, naming it sequence G for sequence on grid. And then you're going to go ahead and I did come something really wrong. Um, go ahead and hit new folder and you're going to need to name the folder something sequence track and then you're going to save all of those files in that folder because what it does it creates a bunch of files and you don't want all those files just hanging around somewhere so make a folder for that and go ahead and hit render and it should render extremely fast and yep I'm already halfway done so uh, but if you have a different computer or a slower computer it might not it might take longer so don't worry if it's slow on that part so we're done with After Effects go ahead and close out of that now we're gonna go into Buju and when you open it, it should just open like this you're gonna go to import sequence and you're gonna find where you saved that folder and I saved it to my desktop track tutorial folder and then sequence track folder uh, and then go ahead and select the first file in the folder click open and right in this box, uh, you want to change the frame rate to whatever your frame rate is. Mine, I suggested 30. Hopefully you did use 30, but anything else, just switch it to whatever it is. And you're going to go ahead and hit apply. And now if you notice, it changed back to 25. You're going to want to click back to 30 and hit apply again. And then hit close if it stayed the same. And you're good. Now if you scroll through the timeline of Buju, it'll, it'll show the file. The video file has loaded in there. So now we're going to go ahead and click Track Features, click Advanced, click Forward a few times just so it adds more points to track to. And then you're going to hit Start. And uh, it's going to take a little bit, so I'm going to pause the video and be right back. I'm back, and it has finished tracking. And if you notice now, when you scroll through, there's going to be a bunch of red plus signs. And 
that's basically if, if they look like they're not moving in the scene it, it, we've done it right so far so now what we're gonna do is gonna go to camera solve make it all frames check optimize camera pass smoothness hit start and it'll go fairly quick and mine always stops at 86 percent it's um, yours will probably do the same it's not actually getting stuck it is just processing I don't know why it chooses to stop at 86 but it does and it's gonna quickly finish right about now and um, now it's gonna auto save of course you always want to do that and now we'll have a bunch of yellow and blue dots that look like are stuck in the scene and if you notice there's a bunch of useless ones like why do we need those points back there on the tree or, or on the pole right here so basically we're gonna go to 3d tasks and solve tools and we're gonna filter structure and what this will do is get rid of all the useless points change the percentage up to 50 hit ok and it gets rid of all those crappy points now this next step is optional if you want it um, to look better you should do it if you wanna if you're just gonna half ass it and you don't really care if it looks good or not then this is what you're gonna get you're gonna if you hit, hit add test object it automatically puts the floor in the middle of um, middle of the the picture or whatever whatever this is called the video file um, but if we go to scene geometry click add coordinate from hint and go to x-axis and for all of you people that aren't retarded in math x-axis is the horizontal so left to right we're gonna select that point and then we're gonna go to what we think is another point horizontal to that and we're gonna hit command click and it should select both points and then connect to selected add another coordinate from hint make it the z-axis and the z-axis is forward and backward so select that point and uh, let's select actually this let's select that point and that point hold once again uh, hold command and click now both points should be selected connect to selected we're gonna hit add coordinate from hit one more time change it to origin and we're gonna select the point that which we think is in the middle so that looks about right connect to selected update coordinate frame update it again just to make sure hit close and now when we add a test object it's gonna be right there and that is exactly what we want hopefully yours turns out as well as mine go ahead and hit delete on the test object now we are going to go to export export to camera solve and we're gonna browse um, now you're just gonna choose where you want to save it and of course I'm gonna save it in that folder and we're gonna name it um, what should we name it track Buju file and hit save and then this is very important you want to scale scene by 100 do not skip this step or else everything will be messed up go ahead and hit save it's gonna take a little bit to save and slash create the cinema 4d file and now we're done with Buju so close out of that close out of iTunes sorry about that um, now we're going to go into that folder wherever you saved it you're gonna go find the file open it double click and I'm using cinema 4 dr 12 so we're gonna get this little box and it you're gonna have the option of these centimeters kilometers blah blah blah. don't touch it leave it at centimeters hit make it 10 scale scene by 10 and if you're in 11 or 11.5 you're not gonna get the centimeters option so just put it at 10 and hit OK and now if you select your top null object let's go ahead and expand the timeline um, when you drag through it should be motion tracked in place so it should look like it's not moving and it, it's a pretty good track um, these first few frames are a little off so we'll probably start when we export it we'll probably export it from 15 onwards so let's go ahead and make a new material by and you do this by double clicking in that little gray area double click on it uncheck specular go to color click this little arrow for texture load image and we're, this is where we're gonna load our sequence our image sequence so go to the folder and you're gonna wanna find the first frame for some reason my uh, frames aren't in order so you're gonna find the quadruple or the five zero file and hit open and then you're gonna hit no and then you're gonna double click on this little image right here and then you're gonna go to animation in the top three tabs up there you're gonna hit animation 
and this is where you put in whatever frame rate you have so it's very important if you, you for you to remember that frame rate and like I said you should use 30 so go ahead and put in your frame rate and hit calculate and it's going to calculate the total amount of frames that this video has go ahead and close out of that okay so now what we're going to do after we created the texture is click and hold on that little light until this this menu list comes up and hit background and now we are going to click and drag this material onto the background and it will lo load bleh, it will load our image sequence into the Cinema 4D file. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit MoGraph, MoText, and if you're in 11.5 it's not called MoText, it's just called Text. And then we're going to hit the little cube, click and hold once again and hit Plane. And now what it's going to do is going to create a floor for us and go into the text object and change the alignment to middle. It just makes everything easier, I think. So go ahead and shift click, uh, select the, both the plane and the text at the same time. And we're going to position it at, as if we where we want it to um, be finalized. So I want it back a little bit, right about there, and click R for rotation, and it brings up this rotation tool, and you can do whatever you want with it. Um, and so I'm going to put it like right about there maybe move it over a little bit and now we're gonna make the plane bigger so it covers the whole area of the text of where possibly shadows could be so go ahead and increase that increase that now that looks pretty good so uh, oh also real quick if you're gonna put like text on the wall um, all you have to do is go plane go to coordinates and change the rotation to 90 degrees and then move it back a little bit and it's basically like it's in the wall so that's if you're putting it on wall but since we're doing floor we're gonna edit undo that and um, so now next step is we're gonna add this same material onto the plane so go ahead and hit control hold control click and drag onto the plane and now um, we're gonna right click on the plane cinema 4d tags compositing check compositing background and now when we render by clicking that button up there or command R um, the floor will look like it's not there and you, as you can tell it doesn't really look flat against the um, ground so go ahead and select both of those and rotation we probably need to rotate it that way just a little bit now when we render looks much better but the shadows it doesn't really look realistic so go into your settings hit effect this is what's really gonna sell sell the effect and go to ambient occlusion Make maximum ray length about 140, 150. I usually put it at. And now when we render, uh, it already looks so much better. Even We haven't even increased the thickness of the text or anything. Look at the shadows it's making. So go ahead into to your text, and I'm going to change it to crates. I'm going to change the, uh, the font to what I used in the example, and it is called ethno, ethnocentric, I think. Yeah, ethnocentric, and hit close out of that and it's really great for 3d text um, go ahead and increase the depth a little bit right about let's say 60 looks good and we're gonna bring down the height it's a little big so let's make it right about hmm, let's see does that look good what does that look like that looks pretty good to me what do you guys think I think like I said, let's um rotate the text actually. Click R again. We're gonna wanna rotate it like that. So now now ah there we go. Looks a lot better now. So next up we're just gonna add a quick little material to that. I have a bunch of presets. Uh once again you can you can probably find some textures online for free. If you're too lazy to make them, let make them like me. So I'm just gonna real quick add this shiny purple to the text, and now when we render, it gives it a little bit of a color and a little bit of reflectiveness. Now this is gonna be a little bit different than what you see in the in the example. Actually, let's go ahead and make it just like the example. I can do it real quick. We're gonna want to duplicate so that text layer command C command V and on this one we're going to want to decrease the depth to about 47 we're gonna rotate the camera angle by holding 3 and clicking and dragging 
and hit E for position and you want to position it into the middle alright now um, reset it just by clicking by clicking in the timeline go into the text that was duplicated go to caps go to fillet cap for both and we're gonna decrease it to about three and now oh, not increase it decrease it let's see what three looks like I like so it looks pretty good so now we can add a different color to that so I'm gonna just real click load another material just a black will look probably good shiny black alright click and drag it onto there and now when we render give us like a blue and a black that looks pretty sweet of course you can use any colors you want I, I um, encourage you to be creative and use original text and colors so that's pretty much it Next, the last thing we're gonna do is add a light for shadows go ahead and hit the white button just one time it'll create a light and we want to position it as if it was actually in the game so if you know this map well the sun is behind us so we're gonna go ahead and move it back move it this way and once again position we can change the camera position real quick by holding three and moving around and it looks a little weird but it's not gonna finish like this so go ahead and move it back zoom out by um, scrolling up and back okay that looks like about good once again click on the timeline to reset it uh, go into your light properties go to shadow go to shadow map soft decrease it to about 40 or 50 and now when we render there's gonna be a slight shadow and you probably can't really tell but let me just go ahead and inc increase it so you can see what's going on you obviously don't want to do this but it creates a shadow on the floor behind it so you want it to be about 40 or 50 let's put it about 40 that looks pretty good actually increase it a little bit to 51 hit render ah there we go you can start to see the shadow a little bit so that's about it now um, real quick render settings click this white um, I don't know what those things are called but that white button up there you're gonna go to anti-aliasing change it to best and change it to 2x2 two two. now basically it's just gonna increase the quality of the video and go to save and you want to change it to a quick time movie click the little dot 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 choose where you want to save it I'm just gonna name it blah blah hit OK go to output and since we don't want all frames I said what I say 15 we want to start it at so I'm gonna go from 15 to 116 so let's go 15 to 116 and of course if you want all frames just click frame range and click change it to all frames leave everything else the same click that orange render button and it'll go ahead and automatically start rendering and it'll take about an hour depending on how long your video is um, for this one I think it took like 45 minutes something like that and this is done for the tutorial now now all you have to do is open your after effects throw on a color correction and it'll look pretty freaking sweet so thanks guys for watching the tutorial if you have any questions feel free to leave them below also you can find all of those tutorials I mean all of those programs that I used in this video um, if you know what I mean and um, so yeah there's the tutorial hope you guys like it leave some feedback and questions alright see you guys later